Hey, welcome back. In this video, we're going to summarize the central limit theorem and apply it to a pretty straightforward example. The main thing we first need to do is talk about our notation and remind you about the general components of the central limit theorem. So suppose we have a random variable that we'll denote with x uh, that has a mean of mu x. So this is how we're gonna denote the mean of the original random variable and a standard deviation of sigma x. Well then, if we create a random variable of these sample means, which we'll describe as x bar, then we have three main things that come out of the central limit theorem. And importantly to remind you is that this doesn't necessitate anything about the distribution of the original random variable, but the first very important thing is that the distribution of these sample means will always be normal for sufficiently large n. The reason this statement is important is that no matter the distribution of our original population, all of the work and tools that we gathered for dealing with normal distributions will work for the distribution of these sample means. And as you know, in dealing with normal distributions, the two main components that we need to do any kind of the work, like calculating probabilities, is the mean of that distribution and the standard deviation. And so the two things that we get, first of all, is that the mean of the distribution of sample means that I'll denote as mu x bar, this is equal to the mean of the original random variable. So again, the mean for the distribution of sample means is exactly equivalent to the mean for the original random variable not so with the standard deviation. To find the standard deviation of the normal distribution of sample means, uh, what we'll do is we're going to take the original standard deviation of our random variable and divide that by the square root of n, where n represents the sample size. And I just want to take a second to emphasize is that we're using mu and sigma in the same way, though now we're going to have two variables which relate to two distributions, the distributions of the original random variable and the distribution of the sample means. And I also want to emphasize this normal distribution uh, will only occur, and we know this from previous work, is that if we have a sufficiently large n. For very few n, we can't promise a normal distribution, but given any original distribution of the random variable, as long as n is sufficiently large enough, it will tend towards a normal distribution. And again, mu x is the original mean, sigma x is the original standard deviation, mu x bar is the mean of these sample means, and mu, uh, sigma x bar is the standard deviation of the distributions of the sample means. Okay, let's ground ourselves. I know it's a lot of vocabulary and notation with an example right here. So in our example, we have a population of values. It has a normal distribution, again, not necessary, but since we know the original population has a normal distribution, we can calculate probabilities, for instance, in the same way we did with other, in our previous conversations of normal distributions, uh, with a mean of 205.1, a standard deviation of 16.4, we're intending to draw a random sample of n equals 158. All right, so first and foremost, let's calculate the mean and the standard deviation of the distribution of these sample means. These are pretty straightforward, but we'll do all of the work that we need in our future to develop probabilities of this distribution of sample means. First and foremost, the mean of the distribution of sample means is actually exactly equal to the mean for the original population here. So we get that mu x bar in this case will be the same of 205.1. And then we need to find the standard deviation of the distribution of sample means. Well, that's where we're gonna use this right here. N in this case is the size of our random sample of 158. So we'll get the standard deviations for this distribution of sample means will be equal to our original standard deviation of 16.4 divided by the square root of 158. And when I calculated that, I got 1.305 when I rounded it to three places. 
And actually, those were the only things we needed the central limit theorem for: was to find the mean of these sample means and the standard deviation. What we're now being asked is to find two separate probabilities. The first probability is the probability that a randomly selected value from the original population lies between 203.8 and 208.6. And secondly, we're being asked to find a probability that a randomly se selected sample mean would lie between 203.8 and 208.6. The important consequence of this is that we both of these populations are normally distributed. We're being told the original population for the original random variable x is normally distributed, and we know from the central limit theorem that the distribution of sample means must be normally distributed. So we're going to attack these in the exact same way. The only difference is when we get to the sample mean part, we're going to use this standard deviation instead of this standard deviation. Again, this first probability is going to be exactly like we've done before. My technique is to standardize all of this by going to z-scores. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a z-score for 203.8. What we have is z equals 203.8 minus the mean of 205.1 divided by the standard deviation of 16.4. And when I plug that in my calculator, I got negative 0.0793. Okay, let's now calculate the z-score for our upper bound here. Uh, we get z equals 208.6 minus the 205.1 divided by 16.4. And when I plug that in my calculator, I got 0 0.2134. All right, and then now that we have the z-scores for our lower bound and upper bound of our given interval, we could use a z-table, we could use a TI calculator or Google Sheets to calculate this. I'll just write the function for uh, a TI calculator. We're going to use normal, CDF. Our lower bound is our lower bound z-score of negative 0 0.0793 to 0 0.2134. And then when I plug that into my calculator, I got 0 0.5459, which again means given this normally distributed population with a mean of 205.1, a standard deviation of 16.4, if we randomly selected a variable, there's about a 54.6% chance that we get a value between 203.8 and 208.6. And then to find this probability that a randomly selected sample mean will lie between these two values, the treatment again is really the same. The only difference is I have a standard deviation in this analysis. Just to show this work real fast, I have z equals 203.8 minus my mean, which is still 205.1. But now I'm going to divide by the standard deviation of 1.305. When I plug that into my calculator, I got negative 0 0.9962. And if I do the same treatment for the upper bound, what I'll get is 208.6 minus 205.1 divided by the standard deviation of 1.305. And when I plug that into my calculator, I got 2.682. All right, and again, that does the work of standardizing our values with the z-scores right here. Let's now, we can use a z-table or our technology to evaluate this. Uh, just to spread the love, I'll use Google Sheets or the code for Google Sheets this time. Uh, to calculate this probability, what I would do is invoke the norm.s.dist function. I would plug in my upper bound which uh, standardized is 2.682, and I would subtract norm.s.dist, uh, evaluated at the lower bound, z-score of negative 0 0.9962. And when I plug that into my calculator, I got 0 0.8368. To quickly summarize the work we just did and what we get from the central limit theorem is that when we create this distribution of sample means, it will always be normally distributed, 
no matter the distribution of our original random variable, there is a slight adjustment to the standard deviation. We keep the same mean, but we get a standard deviation that's always a little bit smaller. And by the way, if you remember, a standard deviation is describing the spread of values from that centrally located mean, meaning the distribution of our sample means will always be a little tighter, a little more dense around the mean. Thus, it makes sense to expect that when we find a probability on any interval of our original random variable and of our sample means, that we should expect that because of that tightness of the sample mean values around the mean, that we'd have a higher probability of randomly selecting a value from that interval, especially when we're centered around the mean.